Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Parnell, and I have come to share a word with you from the Lord. Um, this is <clears throat> it's been something I received on 2-27-23 at 8-27 a.m. Today is 3-10-23, and I'm just now releasing it. Before I do, I want us to pray together, and then I'm going to explain something, and then we'll get to this, what the Lord has given me. Father God, I come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you lead this prayer. You lead this entire session. Take control. I am just your vessel, Father. You do what you need to do. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, I come against any attacks on my body right here and right now, and I cancel them out. Lord, I stand on Isaiah 54, 17. that says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment I can condemn because this is a heritage Lord what was meant to take me out has only hindered me a little bit so I thank you God for these things not prospering now Father God in the name of Jesus I ask this word go forth on the four corners of the wind Holy Spirit take it to whoever needs to hear it whoever needs to see it whoever and let every person Take it before you and lay it before you, Father, in Jesus' name, and ask you for the truth of these things. Now, Father, I ask in Jesus' name you open up the eyes that the people can see the truth and hear the truth with their ears and stop their ears, Lord, and give them a heart to receive the truth of what I say in Jesus' name. And, Lord, if again, in Jesus' name, if I am not speaking your word, you shut me down. Because I do not want to sit here and say, Thus saith the Lord, and it be not you, Lord. I understand the, the penalty and I understand the consequences, not only for myself, but for the people out there, Lord. So, Holy Spirit, you lead me. Now, every plot, gin, snare, device, scheme, arrow, every schematic, every machine, every binary code, every technological and electronical devices and weapons and gizmos and gadgets and all these things that the enemy has in their arsenal, I cancel them in the name of Jesus. Pharmakia. All magic. You have no power over me. I do not align with you. I do not accept what you throw at me. I send it back. And the spiritual law of a hundredfold, I send it back to you a hundredfold. And Father, I even pray that those that would send these magic and all these spells and astral project, that the demons that they control, I ask God, that, that control them, I ask that you just let them turn on them. Let these demons turn on them. In Jesus' name. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every spirit that would rise against this word that is not of you, that you would crush it. In the name of Jesus. And every wagon tongue, that you would shut it down, Father. And Lord, if they're one of yours, but they're backslidden or one of yours and they're just wrong, let the holy fire, the convicting fire, the Holy Spirit go forth from this video. From this video, from this written word, Lord, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Lord, your word cannot be stopped. Jesus' word is forever settled in heaven. <coughs> in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> I rebuke you, Satan. You will get out of my throat. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit within me will raise up a standard against him. Now, I bind every spirit that would hinder in the name of Jesus. Every assault, every attack, every everything in the air, atmospherical. Father God, I'm learning that Satan was a, <clears throat> excuse me, was a demon of, was an angel of music. So he dealt with the notes and frequencies and tunes and pitches and vibration so god anything that he might try to use along that lines i ask you put it on a god frequency i don't know what that is god but you do and i'm asking in jesus name this be done and i clear this atmosphere and ask that the holy spirit invade this this premises lord holy spirit come down and father i loose you to do whatever you want to do in my life, in this ministry's life. And Father God, and all those that's involved in any person, place, or thing. And does not need to be in our life. Regardless of who it is. Take them out. And don't let them come back. It does not matter. 
Your will above all else, Father. Your will above all else. And I take these demons that I that I bound. I bind every demon, every attack, in Jesus' name, and I wrap them in everlasting chains, standing on Jude one six, dipped in the glorified, fortified blood of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I take my sword of the spirit. And I got them from navel to skull. Yes, I do in Jesus' name. And as I said before, you have come to kill, steal, and destroy. <clears throat> Not only my children, my family, but all those I love, too. You have come to kill and steal and destroy the whole human race, not just the Christians. So I will show you no mercy. So in Jesus' name, I now take my sword of the Spirit and I dice you up into a trillion little pieces. And I cast you upon every satanic ritual altar, past, present, and future. In Jesus' name, so that every time somebody gets down to kneel or perform a ritual, they're going to see these demons. They're going to see these entities that are bound, that cannot move, and they're going to know that there is a God in heaven that is greater than the Satan they serve, the little S they serve. In Jesus' name. And Lord, also I pray that they hear Jesus as Lord being sung till the time of judgment, and then to the time of their eternity, throughout eternity. Because when a child of God who is filled with the Holy Spirit, who knows who Jesus is, or just a child who knows who Jesus is, who has accepted Jesus, when they speak the name of Jesus, it causes demons to fear and tremble. And that's what I want. Let them convulse in fear and terror throughout eternity here in the name of Jesus, their Lord and their Master. In Jesus' name. Lord, let everything be done according to your perfect will on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. <clears throat> I apologize for the the interruptions. Thank you, Lord, for that. For the coffee. Okay. Now, this word came forth 2-27-23 at 8-27 a.m. I had been praying and it just came forth. Um, it it is called, I'm on my way. But first, there have been um, people wondering why I call Jesus my spiritual husband or my husband. It's scriptural. And he wanted me to go ahead, because this is a word to the bride and others, and he wanted me to explain that. And I'm going to give you scripture for it, and then you take it to the Lord, and you pray about it and seek him. Anything I say, you take to the Lord. All right. Now, our lovely Jesus, I wrote down the scriptures, has instructed me to explain before giving this word why I do call him my husband, my spiritual husband, even before the marriage in heaven. So I'm asking Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, lead me to speak it in a way that they can understand in an in a, in a understanding for all Christians, no matter what level. So it's easily understood. First, in Scripture, it plainly says it. Isaiah 54, 5 says, For thy Maker, which is God, and, and the Bible says, I and my Father are one. God and Jesus are one. That's in John. Isaiah 54, 5 says, For thy Maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called but then he confirms it in Hosea 2 16 when he says and it shall be at that day saith the Lord that thou shalt call me Ishi and shalt call me no more Bali you look up the meaning of Ishi it is my husband and Bali was my master so thou it says and it shall be at that day saith the Lord that thou shalt call me Ishi my husband and shall call me no more Bali, my master. So, if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you're one of his children. He's your friend. He's your husband. He's your redeemer. He's your strong tower. He's everything you need. Galatians 3.28 28 and 29. The reason I'm saying this is some people say, well, those scriptures just refer to Israel. Galatians 3, 28, 29. 
28. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male or female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. 29. And if ye be Christ, then ye are all one. <coughs> Excuse me. And if ye be in Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So that right there says that this applies to us too. Okay, but again, the point about even though we have not appeared at the marriage supper, Jesus is still our husband. But just to back that up further, when Jesus was on the earth, he was a Jew. So he goes by the Jewish customs. And when you were betrothed or espoused, that's the same binding covenant as marriage. And I'll give you verses on that. <clears throat> Matthew eighteen nineteen. They were still considered married even before they came together physically. And you can go into um, Jewish cut marriage customs, study that, and you'll find out. Matthew 18, 19. 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused, betrothed, engaged, to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. 19. Then Joseph... Her husband, they're espoused, they're engaged. The covenant is binding even before the physical act. Her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was mindful to put her away privily. You can study the customs, as I said, if the Lord leads, and get a better understanding of that. So Jesus is our holy husband, if you want him to be. You can reject that. I, ref I, I, I accept everything. When he says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, well, that's, that's the role of a husband. Supposed to be, anyways. <clears throat> and then he's, he gave us Isaiah 54, 5 and Hosea 2, 16. And then that goes to 2 Corinthians um, 13, 1, which says, this is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or more witnesses shall every word be established. This is why Jesus is my husband, my spiritual husband, the lover of my soul. So if you truly know him, if you've accepted him, he's your spiritual husband too. Okay, so if anyone preaches or teaches you anything otherwise, they're either ignorant and unlearned, haven't studied it, or they're false a false teacher, a false preacher. So that's why you need to pray about all things and over all things. And um, 1 John, 1 John 4, 1 says, Try the spirits whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So you need to try it. Just because somebody says it, even if it's somebody you trust, take it to the word. If you get that little, mm, that, mm, that don't sound, or just, just you know, you're wondering, Jesus will not lead you wrong. Don't take my word. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to the truth. Because he leads you to Jesus and teaches you about Jesus. Jesus is the truth. Alright. And I'm asking you to take out the prayer. And he wanted that done before. So when you realize that when he's talking. Like, like he's a groom to be. Or or he's still considered your husband because we're in the be the betrothal the the spouse the engaging the engaged area All right. excuse me thank you lord all right 22723 at 827 a.m. this is called i'm on my way and um today is 31023 and it is 741 a.m. So let's get started. Lord Jesus, just lead me. Holy Spirit. And um, like I said, I had been praying and it just came. And oh, the powerful word when it came. It says, I'm on my way, my bride. I'm on my way. Make sure your garments are clean, spotless in me. Look to the east for I am coming. I am coming. <clears throat> I'm on my way. Father says it's time. Have you made yourself ready, fully ready in me? Many have, and oh, how my heart rejoices. For soon I shall present you to my Father, praise God, and all of heaven, a bride worthy for me. 
a bride adorned in holiness and righteousness. I'm coming. I'm coming, my bride, my beloved. I'm on my way. Praise God. Ooh, praise the Lord. When you arrive and father, when you arrive and you are presented, and when you arrive before father and you have been presented to him, we shall dance before him in unspeakable joy. We have longed for this day, Father and I, for you, my bride, to finally be fully adorned and ready for our wedding ceremony. We will sit down together at the marriage feast with those who have already arrived before you, and we will celebrate our joyous union together of holy bride to holy king. Praise God. You will find that peace is forever present, wrapped in the Father's unending love and kindness. I'm soon to arrive, my bride. Oh, how my heart beats passionately for you. I love you, my bride. Oh, how I love you. I'm on my way. I'm coming. Yet sadly, many more still yet of my children, my church, are half clad in their wedding attire. Or what they have adorned themselves with is found to be dirty and spotted. This will not do. Would you dress yourself for your marriage in this world to your soon-to-be groom wearing wrinkles, spotted, attire, or be only half clad, partially dressed for this event? Most, gr <clears throat> excuse me, most brides dress themselves as princesses in garments clean, spotless, and unwrinkled. Yet you present yourselves this way to me, your holy king and savior. This is not acceptable, and I warned you, if you are found unprepared, then I will leave you behind. I have given you all the instructions in my holy word that will lead you how to adorn yourself properly for me. You must live a holy life, Holy by my standards, which is made possible in me. My Holy Spirit shall teach you how to live pleasing to me, to my Father, so you can be found acceptable, holy, and clean before me when I return. You know this already because many of you have been in my church, even been saved, washed clean by my blood, but you have let the cares of this world entice you back into sin. If you are spotted with sin when I return, I shall leave you behind. But know this, my church. This is your own choice, not mine. That you find yourself left behind to face Antichrist's evil, wicked reign upon your world. If you, if you hold resentment and bitterness inside your heart, this is sin. If you hold unforgiveness, this is sin. If you have doubt in your heart that I can do all my word says I can, this is sin. If you hate, this is sin. You know these things, my children. Sin is sin. Just know that when I return, that grudge of unforgiveness you cling to so desperately Holding to your heart, declaring it's your right because of all that's been wrongfully done to you at the hands of others will no longer bring you a perverse satisfaction of a sense of righteousness, false righteousness. You have allowed yourself to be betrayed and deceived. Did I not tell Simon Peter one <clears throat> is to forgive seven times seventy in one day in my holy word? When I return, if you do not ac accompany me to my heaven, it is your choice. There are no acceptable excuses. It is your own conscious choice. Your decision you chose to make. Get the sin out now. Now I say because I'm on my way.
Father says it's the now time. Now my bride who have made herself ready, how radiant and beautiful you are to me. Persecution, trials, and testing have only made you holier and more beautiful than before. You glow with my glory upon you. I love you, my holy bride. Keep yourself ready because it's homecoming time in heaven, too, when you are taken to my home, your home. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm on my way. My feet are on the threshold of heaven's portals, and I and my angels are ready to descend with a grand, with a grand shout, with the trumpet blaring, announcing our arrival upon your earth, my earth. I'm on my way, bride, my bride. I'm on my way. Praise God. And he had me to sign it, daughter, sign it from Jesus, your beloved groom to be. He's our husband, but he, we have that marriage supper. Praise God. All right, the verses that he's given me is Hosea eleven seven, Revelation sixteen fifteen, Revelation nineteen six through nine, Matthew twenty five one through thirteen, Matthew twenty two eleven through fourteen. Matthew 24, verse 12, 27, 30 through 31, 43 through 51. First Peter 1, 13 through 23, Jeremiah 2, 32, Isaiah 54, 5, the scripture from the beginning. Matthew eighteen twenty one through twenty two, and Hosea two sixteen the other scripture from the beginning. So I'm asking you. Please pray about this word. Pray, seek the Lord. Be part of that bride. There's a distinction between church and bride. If you've noticed, the bride is making herself ready. The bride is preparing. The bride is adorning herself in righteousness and holiness. Praying, seeking, fasting, worshiping, you know, reaching the lost. The bride is being the bride. So if, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you've got to let it go. You've got to let it go. Bitterness, bitterness has a root. You've got to get that out. You've got to get that out. You've got to come to the place that if the person that did you wrong comes before you, you can look at them in the eye and say, I forgive you. It's not impossible. Not always easy, but not impossible through Jesus. Because it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 So, if you have bitterness, if you have resentment, if you have hatred... If you have any kind of sin, it's time to repent. Yes, it's time to repent. If you are lukewarm, if you are you know, trying to live half, half your, your foot in the world and the other half serving the Lord, you're trying to straddle the fence. Satan owns the fence. It's time to get right. It's time to fall on your faces and repent. And ask the God that you love and you've confessed to love and you confess to know to forgive you. And he will. First and foremost, God is love. God is love. And we have to understand it's a love like we can't comprehend fully. So I'm going to say a prayer. And if this prayer is going to be for if you don't know Jesus and you want to accept him then this is the time. It's as easy as this prayer. So Holy Spirit, lead me how you want, want this prayed. Jesus, please forgive me of all my sin. And Jesus, please forgive me for aligning with Satan in any way and having sin when I confess to know you. And Jesus, I ask you, 
to come into my heart, for I have never known you. Forgive our sins, forgive my sin, forgive my sin, my sins, my wrongs that I have done against you, your holy code, your moral code. And I ask that you would renew a love in me, a passionate, burning love in me for you. And for the the new, new people coming, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Wash me clean. Give me a love for Jesus. A love, let me feel that love like no other. And I confess that you are the Savior. I confess that you were born of a virgin. And I confess that you rose again on the third day when you gave your life on Calvary. So that I could be free. And so that I could again return. The, the ground is level at the cross. And the cross is just a symbol. What happened on the cross is where the true victory is. What happened before when he was beaten, he was bruised, he was battered. The shedding of his blood from the time he was picked up, from the time he said it is finished. The shedding of his blood is what is important. The cross is just a symbol. So Lord, we thank you for that. So Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. And Jesus, I come back to you. In Jesus' name I pray. It's that simple. It's that simple. And time is running out. Time is short. If you need prayer, we have our prayer email. It's prayer.856mindjesus at gmail.com But it will be posted, Lord willing, and in the comment section under each video. And also it can be found on the www.mylovelyjesusministry.com site. And I appreciate the prayers. We're getting some movement in some of the hindrances we've had. And they will fall down in Jesus' name because greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And I just want to stress again, this ministry's foundation is Jesus. Not me, not anybody else. It was birthed on Jesus. Everything's done through Jesus' name. We pray about every move. And storms may come, but that foundation will never be shaken because Jesus is the rock that we are built on, as each of our lives should be as Christians, as true children of God. Because everybody calls themselves Christians, even though that's the title that we have. I'm a born-again believer of Jesus Christ, baptized with His Holy Spirit on my way to heaven. That's who I am. I don't claim to be nothing but a servant of God trying to do my part. I've been called to warn. I'm going to warn. No matter what it costs me. God bless. Stay under the blood. And remember, he's on his way. From Tennessee, bye-bye.